Year and a half, yeah, oh my goodness. Feels like, oh my God, <laughs> we got our life back. I know, mean, it's crazy, isn't it? You know, the last 18 months we've managed. I can feel this, this desperation, you know. Um, the Shanghai Motor Show recently, 73 vehicles were full BEVs. Oh, wow. So I'm actually very proud of what my company does. I think the flexibility is the future. Margaret, where are you now? Are you in Slovakia? Yes, I'm in Bratislava. Yeah, yeah. H how are things there? Yeah, it's good. It's beginning to open up a little bit here. So um, we can get into restaurants now and, and um, we can get out and about. So it's it's um, it's definitely getting a bit better. And the it, sun's shining, so what can you yeah. ask for? It feels like a blessing, yeah, when, when you can actually walk around everywhere you like. It feels like, oh my God, <laughs> we've got our life back. <laughs> Absolutely. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Anyways, uh, when was the last time we saw each other? It was uh, at our last CEO Tomoti Forum, right? Um, it was, yeah, that's oh, two oh, years oh, ago. No, oh, year and a half, yeah. Year and a half, yeah, oh my goodness. So, um, at the forum at 2019, we did an interview with you. And we were asking you about global trends, about what future brings to us and so on. And you were speaking about such trends as uh, ACES, which is uh, autonomous, That's right, yeah. electrified and shared, if I'm not mistaken. And the CE is, yeah, yeah, is very much about technology, innovation, engineering and so on, and that we don't really know what future brings. Now, I have two questions for you. After all we've been through, uh, during these last two, one and a half years, do you think the pandemic affected and dramatically changed uh, automotive trends globally and in Central Eastern Europe in particular? And do you think, what do you think should we expect from the future now? Um, so I don't think it's fundamentally changed the automotive trends that are going forward. Um, I think, you know, the focus is very much on s sustainability, electrification, you know, Jaguar Land Rover, we just announced our reimagined strategy, which is all about electrification for the future. You know, by 2030, 60% of our vehicles will be electrified. Um, the Shanghai Motor Show recently, 73 vehicles were full BEVs. Oh, wow. So it Clear that the you know the focus of the automotive industry is very very much in that electrification and certainly for CE and Hungary in particular with that focus on battery technology you know I, I see that as um, absolutely being at the heart of where we're going in the future. Okay, okay, no, this this is amazing. So while um, nobody was really really ready for for our new reality, do you think there are any lessons learned, and do you think that we can actually somehow? benefit from this COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, I, I actually think um, it brings out the best of some things. Um, so the thing I think that's amazing is, you know, the last conference we were talking about change a lot. Um, yeah. We just never imagined the change we were going to see. And if you think about it, in February last year, we were all in the offices, we were all working as normal. By the end of March, quite a lot of automotive factories were shut and all of us were working remotely. Yep. But we managed. You know, the last 18 months we've managed, we've managed to work remotely, we've got their factories back up and running, you know, working safely, making sure our people are absolutely at the core, um, sharing best practice. You know, we've very much, everybody that's found out, oh, this is works, this is how it, it goes well, have been very generous in sharing their best practice, even you know, with governments and so on and so forth. Um, and I think the other thing that we really shouldn't lose is about mental health. Yeah. We have got really, really focused on thinking about, because we can't see people every day in the normal way, is actually making sure people are okay, checking in, in with people. Um, we've just finished um, back in the UK, seven weeks of what we call making kindness and all. Oh, and wow. we've been talking things like positivity, about checking in, uh, you know, exercise, health generally. So, and the flexibility that we've now got. And I really think that's something that, you know, two big things, don't lose the flexibility, but also don't lose the resilience this has taught us. We can change. We yeah. can change dramatically and come out of it stronger. Absolutely. And I think, to be honest, uh, GLR in particular does an amazing job with, with people, with managing people and making sure that they're fine within all this craziness, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. People are at the heart of our business. 
Yeah, no, that, that that's really good. So uh, moving away a little bit from the from the pandemic, uh, I think, um, well, according to my opinion, uh, you're quite active socially. Uh, at least I see that you're active in social media, you attend events, uh, virtual maybe now and before offline events. Uh, why do you think uh, being socially active is an important feature for a manager in in automotive industry? And also speaking about such trend as a business communities, do you think this is something the industry in CE really needs today and can benefit from? Okay, so um, I'm socially active, particularly on LinkedIn and things like that, for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, in CEE, the um, profile of Jaguar Land Rover is not as high as it is, for example, in the UK. So, you know, we are building our brand, we're recruiting at the moment, both in Nitra and in Budapest. So it's really important that, you know, when we are trying to attract top talent, and there's plenty of top talent in this region, that people think about Jaguar Land Rover and want to come and work for us. So it's it's really important from a talent retention. And but also because I'm actually very proud of what my company does. So that's why I share stuff because I'm proud of what we do as a company. And it's it's stuff that I think, you know, as you say, you talk about building community and sharing best practice. So either doing that virtually through platforms such as LinkedIn or conferences or face to face. It it helps us all it helps us all develop and grow yeah absolutely and 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 what do you think about business communities do you think this is uh, really something that companies should look at at the moment and unite and then do something together absolutely and and that's what i was referring to earlier so, so yeah. if i think covid time particularly we actually had small um sort of communities yeah. which we would share information on a regular basis in terms of this is what happening in terms of the pandemic, in terms of the government changes that were happening. And this is what we were doing to manage those changes and, and with our supply base particularly and, and getting lots of good information coming both ways. So I think business communities generally are absolutely um, critical to make sure, as I said, we all move forward together. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of our CEO Automotive Forum that will hopefully take place in Budapest on uh, 20th, 21st of October now, uh, do you think um, such forum could be um, a great place for actually building such community, for, for giving a good start, for uniting people into communities? I, th I think, it, I mean, hopefully, as you say, hopefully it will take place and hopefully it will be face to face because um, whilst I think remote is great, as I said, we've shown we can do so much um, from remote forums, but actually talking to people, you know, finding out what their experience has been over the last 18 months, what have we learned from it? What can we take into the future? What do we really want to hang on to and make sure we don't lose? And what do we want to put behind us? I think it's, um, I think it's going to be a great opportunity to actually hopefully speak to some people and find out what everybody else is thinking. Yeah, yeah. Now I speak with many people, with our participants, you know, and speakers and delegates, and I can feel this, this desperation, you know, this desire to actually finally meet, you know, in reality and, and talk to each other like normal people, you know, face to face. <laughs> do, do, do you have any particular expectations from the forum if, if it goes on, hopefully 100%? <laughs> Um, I, th I think it would be interesting, again, to hear other people's views of, of where the future's going, whether they see there's been a change in direction. Um, I'm hoping to talk about hybrid working and remote working. So when we first spoke about what we should do, I was talking about remote working. Well, now we're moving into hybrid working, which brings another load of um, challenges with them. And um, again, as I said, I think the flexibility is the future. But how is that going to work? What's that going to look like? How are we going to manage that? How are we going to manage our teams? How are we going to manage making sure we don't have a culture of presentism? Whereas if you're in the office, you get treated differently from the people that are not in the office. And how do we take advantage of the big talent pool that a remote working will give when you don't have to be in the office every day? So I'm really looking forward to having some of those conversations with people. Yeah, 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 me too, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Margaret. It was so lovely to see you. I hope to see you in, in real life, in normal life in October, just like everybody else. Uh, fingers crossed, yeah, October will be the month for us to meet. <laughs>